Let me ask you a question. How many video streams are your cameras capable of producing? More than one? Probably, <laughs> probably is your answer. Um, if it's a camera that's been manufactured in the last five years, probably a lot more than one, probably closer to four or five. Here's another question. How many of those streams are configured in Omnicast? I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a complaint about workstation performance. Man, I load up a bunch of cameras on my screen and my workstation just can't keep up. And it's not that many cameras. It's 10, it's 16, it's 20. And my workstation's a workhorse. Why is this happening? First place I always go to check is the config tool under the video section. And I look to see how many streams are configured. And lo and behold, 99 times out of 100, what do I find? One stream configured. The default stream. And this is like super irritating. It's a major pet peeve because it's an indication that the system, not that it's set up incorrectly, but is set up inefficiently. So when you have workstation performance issues and you only have one camera stream set up, these two issues are not mutually exclusive. In this episode, I'm going to take you through a feature called automatic stream selection, which has a horrible acronym. So for our purposes, we'll call it uh, dynamic stream selection or DSS. And I'm going to take you through how you set this up, why you would set it up. And uh, hopefully at the end of this, you'll go back to your systems and to your customer's systems and turn on some extra video streams. So let's dive in. So dynamic stream selection, what is it? What does it do? Have you ever wondered what this little I button is right here? Show stream. Well, if I click on that, you'll see um, the stream that's selected is the default stream, which for me is set up as automatic, which by the way, just complete side note, and I'm going to show you how to do this. That's not set up as automatic out of the gate. Now, just bear with me. We'll get to what that means in a minute, but you will have to go to options and make sure that automatic is selected for each one of your workstations. Put that in a bucket. We'll get there. Now, what else is it showing me here? It's showing me the resolution, right? So we're doing H.264. We're at 1080p, 30 frames a second, 8 megabits per second, right? what my IP address is uh, of the source, the port that's coming over, how's it coming over, blah, blah, blah. And, and I can show the stream, video stream diagnosis. We'll get to that in a, in a later video. But here's what's really important to note here. So I'm only looking at four cameras on the screen right now. That one tile is pulling eight megabits per second over your network delivered to this workstation. Wow. Talk about a bandwidth hog. And, you know, if I come up here to my performance metrics, I have a pretty beefy uh, workstation with a uh, with a graphics processor in it. But you can see I'm, I'm using a, a good amount of the GPU uh, to decode just these three streams right now. And the primary reason for that is because of that camera. That camera sending me 8 megabits per second of data uh, is really, if I have multiple cameras set up in that way, is really going to crush my workstation. And if you don't have a beefy workstation like this one, you're going to start running into some problems the more and more windows you open up. So how do I change that, right? And, and how do I ensure that that doesn't happen? Well, that is in Config Tool. So let's jump over. So here we are in Config Tool. We're going to go to the, our Video tab. We're going to go to our archiver, find our camera. So here it is, the Sony dome camera and click on the video unit. Let's go to video. So in video, we can see that I have this camera is capable of sending out three different streams. Uh, I have stream two selected here. Let me go over to stream one. So stream one is uh, 1080p constant bit rate, two megabits per second, pumping out 30 frames per second at a key frame interval of five. I'm gonna expect that you know what all of these metrics mean. But 
What about this, stream usage? And this is where, like I said in the intro, this is the first place I come to check. And I'm gonna hit that stream usage, and I'm gonna see that there's different streams are being used for different purposes. In this particular camera, of the three streams that I have set up, the recording stream and the high resolution stream are stream one, they are turned on for 1080p, two megabits per second at 30 frames per second. So I know the camera is recording at 1080p, constant bit rate of two megabits per second at 30 frames per second. And it's also my high resolution stream. If I selected this in security desk, this is the stream that I would receive. Now you could see my live stream is H.264 part two. Let me go over there. For live, I have it set up at 720 D1, or excuse me, D1 resolution, which is 480p, I guess, uh, streaming at a constant bit rate of 512 kilobits at 30 frames per second. And then I have one other stream, H.264.3, which is set up for remote and low resolution. So if somebody were to log in remotely, or is looking for the low resolution stream, or is logging in from a mobile app, they're gonna get 320 by 184 at half a megabit per second. But I know that that is the stream that they're going to pull. What I explained to you earlier in the intro, if you only have one stream set up, the default stream is going to be whatever the maximum <laughs> allowable human dosage is to steal a line from my favorite comedian, Jerry Seinfeld. So if this is just set up at uh, a default, settings, right? So default settings with one stream turned on. So if I made all of these the same, there would be no usage of H.264.2 or 2643. You can see this grayed out space, eight megabits per second, 30 frames per second. This thing is gonna be pumping out on all cylinders. So whether or not you're logging in from a local workstation, a remote workstation, or a mobile phone, you're getting 1080p at eight megabits per second. Over the course of setting up multiple cameras for viewing, that is going to start to have serious performance impact issues, not just on your workstation, but on your network as well. So again, what's the solution here? The solution is setting up multiple streams. So again, I'm gonna come back here. Stream one is gonna be my recording stream and my high resolution stream. That I'm gonna use, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pick one here for all intents and purposes. We'll do 15 frames per second, uh, which is gonna give me a, a constant bit rate of 512 kilobits, 15 frames a second. So we Genetech sort of gives you these um, uh, pre-canned options, right? Uh, maybe I'll go high on this one. Now I'm going to go over to H.264.2. This is going to be live, my live stream. So I'm going to turn off remote and low res. That's going to kick over to H.264.3. For my live stream, I only need, what, 1080s? Maybe I'll go 720p, and I'll go medium grade quality, and kick over to H.264.3. This is going to be my low res stream and my remote stream. This I'm gonna leave at here, uh, 352 by 288. And I'm gonna go very low, right? Just to, to give me a usable stream, but nothing that's going to, uh, to really affect me if I'm in an area that doesn't have great coverage, right? I'm on a mobile phone, maybe I only have one bar of LTE. Well, I need a stream that's going to be serviceable so I could do my job. So here I'm only going to pump out a 64 kilobit per second stream. Now here's the other really important thing to note here. You can set schedules as well. So again, don't get me started on systems where the only schedule is the always schedule. If you have a system that only has the always schedule, make some more schedules, please. At least have like a Monday through Friday and a weekend schedule, right? And it's just as simple, well, you have to set up schedules um, in config tool, which is just here 
uh, oh gee, I forget where it is. So just type in schedules. Oh, it's in system schedules. And as you can see here, I have a number of schedules that I can choose from. Like here's a Monday through Friday daytime schedule. Here's a Monday through Friday nighttime schedule. Here's a weekend schedule. Maybe we'll do a future video about how to set up schedules. It's, it's so easy. Uh, but coming back here, if I wanted to maybe change my schedules to say, you know what, I want I want my uh, video quality to be different on my live because maybe I'm going to have more operators and I want them to have a better image Monday through Friday during the day. I can do that, right? I can say, you know what, give me a better resolution stream. Give me a 720p stream, but, uh, you know, make it, I don't know, two, two megabits per second. Or, you know, put it on variable bit rate and give it a cap of five megabits. I don't know why you would ever do that, but you can. Hit apply, and now Monday through Friday during that schedule, the live stream will be 720p at a max of five megabits per second. This is not rocket science, this is not incredibly complex, but it's the one thing that I see is seldomly set up on systems that are having performance issues. So here we are back in the security desk application, and as you can see, I have my Sony dome camera loaded up here, and I've selected the live stream. So you can see the camera, just like we just had it configured, is now pulling the live stream, 720p, eight frames per second, and it's giving me a bit rate of 250 kilobits per second. That's much better than what we were having before, which was the 1080p stream at eight megabits per second. And obviously you can tweak this. I mean, the video quality here is not fantastic, but for a live operator, does it really need to be? That's a question for you, that's up to your best practice, but I would posit that it doesn't need to be an eight megabit per second stream, right? Even if it's a 4K camera, it doesn't really need to be such a, such a high bit rate and really sort of squash uh, your, your network performance. And then I can choose different streams, right? So here's my remote stream, which you'll see will now come in at the resolution that we said before, which is obviously a really uh, low quality uh, image, but here again, I'm accessing it from a mobile network. I need a serviceable image that I can use to do my job. There you go. Or we can select the high resolution stream and get the full tilt performance of the camera. So now we're getting three megabits per second. This is that sort of uncapped uh, stream, 1080p, 30 frames a second, awesome. Now, when you set up a view like this, is the expectation that you have to go and change the stream selection for every single tile that you're looking at. Of course not. But if you don't configure this ahead of time, you will have to. So let me show you how to make it so that the stream selection is automatic. Automatic stream selection. Check this out. Go to the main page in Security Desk and click on Options. Go to Video and go to default options, which is kind of hidden there, and make sure live stream is set to automatic. So it will automatically select the appropriate sized image for your tile, okay? Otherwise, out of the box, I think it's just set up as live. So every, all your live streaming will always uh, come through right on on all of your tiles and you'd have to go and manually select whereas with automatic the system will select which tile size or based on your tile size the system will select the appropriate uh stream from your camera let's let me show you how how that actually works so now back in the monitoring task i'm gonna set it to automatic now you can see on the automatic this is giving me my, my best resolution because my workstation can handle this resolution, this, um, you know, these, these camera parameters. But if I increase the number of tiles on the screen, do I really need a 1080p image in what ultimately is about the size of a postage stamp? No. So the system will now automatically switch the video from that tile 
to its appropriately sized video stream. Check this out. Okay, so now I'm going to do something crazy and I'm gonna simulate throwing up a tremendous amount more video on the screen. Be the, the point of this simulation is I'm gonna go from basically four tiles to 64 tiles, but I want you to see what happens to the image quality of the Sony dome camera. So now that we're here and you can see I've got all 64 tiles available to me, that tile number two with the Sony dome camera is again, this big. It's like the, the size of, uh, of a few postage stamps. Um, I don't need 1080p in that window. And if we now look and click on the eye, you'll see it's changed it to my 720 stream at 255 kilobits per second. So the system is smart enough to recognize, hey, the tile's way too small, the performance of the workstation and uh, you know everything else that you have going on on, on, your, uh, on your screen does not warrant the highest resolution stream. Let me give you something that's a lot more usable. And again, based on a schedule, that can change, but think about how dynamic this now is. So as I'm switching tasks, as I'm going from more tiles to fewer tiles, the system is dynamically selecting the appropriate stream. And of course, if we go back, it's now given me back my 1080p stream. So an incredibly useful tool, but it requires a little bit of forethought. You have to go in and you have to set up multiple streams in order for this to work. So automatic stream selection, or for today's purposes, dynamic stream selection. I'm gonna throw a link down below to the Tech Doc Hub article that talks all about this, this particular feature. Again, it's not wrong to only have one video stream configured for your cameras, but your system could run so much more efficiently if you took a little bit of time and uh, set up individual streams to do different things and maybe even setting up schedules to have them do different things at different times. Think about how much better your workstation performance and your overall uh, Genetech Security Center system could be in terms of efficiency. So, automatic stream selection. I'm going to throw a link down below to the Tech Doc Hub article uh, on the Genetech portal. If you are a Genetech registered portal user, just click that link and it'll take you there. If you're not uh, registered for the portal, go ahead and register. Uh, it's uh, an incredibly useful tool, even beyond like the Tech Doc Hub, but to be able to place your orders and find all your different sales tools and all that sort of fun stuff, portal.genetech.com. I'll throw a link down below for that as well. I challenge you, go to Config Tool, see how many streams you have available on your cameras, and, and, and really see how many streams you're actually utilizing. If the answer is you're not utilizing any more than the default stream, go and spend some time in there and make your system run more smoothly. My name's Phil Coppola. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for Genetech in the great state of New Jersey, as well as a board certified physical security professional. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel to receive more great content like this, and we'll see you on the next one.